Hello, today we're going to be looking at the organisation, ownership and arbitration feature of the Library of Process Objects version 5, which is used by PlantPX version 5 systems from a user's point of view. So let's get started by having an introduction to what organisation, ownership and arbitration is. Organisation, ownership and arbitration allows the system implementer to group the plant equipment and your plant together to match your plant structure and then obtain status information at each level and commands groups of things in your plant from the location. It also then gives you enhanced diagnostic features, which we'll demonstrate a bit later in this video. In the example you can see here, um, we have grouped items in our plant into areas. Um, and in those areas, you can also have other areas. In those areas, you can have units, you can have equipment modules and phases, you can have control modules. There are no rules about what has to be underneath what. So an area can contain another area, it can contain a unit, it can contain an equipment phase, for example. The diagram shows you what is a parent in this structure and what is a child in this structure. So what are the control modules in this diagram? The control modules are the majority of the library of process objects instructions. For example, the process valve, the process motor. It's any instruction that monitors a device, controls a device, or performs a process function, such as PID control, material dosing, or motor leak lag standby control. The grouping is undertaken by configuration, so there's no programming or coding required by the implementer. It's very simple to set up, and it's very easy to change in the future if you have modifications to your plant. At each level, there's consolidation of the status information, e.g. myself or at least one of my children has an alarm present or an interlock or a maintenance bypass active. Commands to a parent can also be propagated to all of its children. For example, the unit can say acknowledge all my alarms and all the alarms of my children. A child can be associated with more than one parent, so this allows you to support plants where you have shared equipment. So what does this give you in terms of a result? Well, the first one is that it quickly allows you to determine where issues are and understand them from the HMI for Plant PAX and the Library of Process Objects. On the left here, you can see an example where we have an overview screen. And number one is showing you that in the batch tank area, there is a maintenance bypass active by the little spanner symbol. Going into that little batch tanks, level two area, you can then see um, that in the area, level three area of that batch tanks, the premix of 601, again, there is a maintenance bypass active. Once we click on that to go into that screen, we can see for that area exactly where that is. And we can then bring up the tree view that's been made available in the Library of Process Objects version five. This shows a structure that you've built using organization, ownership and arbitration, and then shows you um, where the, status, the summary of the status information at each level. So by browsing the tree and following the tree down, we eventually get to point four where you can see that that valve XV6010 um, has a maintenance bypass active. We can select that valve then directly from the tree to display its faceplate. And from its faceplate, we can see the detail of that maintenance bypass. Here we can see that it's been set up to not use the actual open feedback for the valve. It's simulating it instead. The other advantage then is for system implementers when they're implementing sequencing logic um, within their system, yeah, well, uh, where they need to uh, sort out what's going on with devices and when they need to worry about ownership. There's no code that they need to write to do that. Um, for example, the process area, the process unit, the equipment phase and the equipment model instructions that we provide in the library all would have a single all my children are owned by me and ready to operate status bit. So this makes um, it much simpler in the logic to know when everything is healthy and it's okay to proceed, or if there's an issue with one of the devices that you're controlling. There's also a single acquire my children command and release my children command. This is to do with ownership. So this makes it much simpler for um, implementers to handle 
getting ownership of everything that they need to command in a sequence as an example. The tree view that you can see on the left indicates who owns each item in the tree and it also shows any children that cannot be acquired by a parent, simplifying resolving shared ownership conflicts. So where you do have devices that can be owned by more than one device, you can see what's currently owning a device. So your device control logic and sequencing logic no longer needs to contain a significant amount of code to support handling you know, what's going on with all the devices that you're controlling and trying to own, take care of ownership of those devices. You now just need to write code for undertaking the job in hand. So this significantly reduces the work required, reducing the implementation cost, and it significantly reduces the code complexity in simplifying support and future changes. So what status information can be propagated using organization, ownership and arbitration? Here you can see a list of all the things that can be propagated, but a key point here is that it's highly configurable. At each level, you have full control about what information is propagated up to the level above it. And then what commands can we propagate down from a parent? Here you can see a list of all the commands that can be propagated, but in the same way as a state information, you have full control about what is propagated from a parent down to a child at every level. So let's look at this in action. So here we have a demonstration system where we can currently see that we have some status information being indicated to us using the organization, ownership and arbitration framework. So in the top level menu here, we can see that in the level two batch tank area, we have some issues going on. We have a spanner symbol and a black dot, and that's been indicated as well in the batch tank area. From the HMI, the user can navigate into the batch tank area, either by using the menu button or clicking directly on the batch tank area to be taken to the level two display for the area where they can then see you know, that this issue is highlighted in Premixer 601. From this screen then, we can open up the organization tree that you saw an example of in the presentation. And we can then see what's going on. We can see that in this um, Premixer 601 unit, yeah, um, this particular equipment phase um, has an issue. It has the dot beside it. What does the dot mean? We can open up the help to see that it has a device not ready to operate. If we then expand this equipment phase, we can see the things that the equipment phase uses as defined by the organization tree that's been configured. And here we can see that the pump it's using here um, is the device that's not ready to operate. From this device, we can then directly open up the faceplate for the device to see the details of the problem. So we can see that this device has an IO fault. We can go to the diagnostics tab so we can see that the IO fault is present and a reset is required to clear this condition. So if we now perform this reset, to reset the IO, we can see then that that status is propagated all the way back up to the top and that everything is now healthy in that unit. We can also see that something going on in reactor 801 here. So let's minimize unit P601, go into unit R801. Again, we can follow the same process. Follow the tree structure. We see that the transfer out phase here um, has something with um, a maintenance bypass. This is what the spanner symbol means. We can then expand the transfer out equipment phase and see that it's this particular valve that has a maintenance bypass active. Clicking on the valve brings up the faceplate for that valve. And then we can see by following the spanner symbol to the <coughs> spanner part of the faceplate, the maintenance tab, we're led to exactly where this maintenance bypass is active. It's because we've configured this valve to ignore its open feedback and simulate it. If we remove that so that it's actually using the real feedback, then again, all that status information goes back to being healthy um, and there's no longer any issues being highlighted in the tree. So we can see that there's nothing highlighted in the tree and that the menu is no, no longer saying that there's an issue active in that area. So let's demonstrate 
<clears throat> another feature where we have an alarm um, for an equipment phase, yeah, which is a sequence and being and that's been implemented in our plant PX system using the library of process objects. So what I'm going to do is go into the premixer 601 area to show more detail. And then I'm going to go into my simulation of the plant to set up a fault in this area. So we're using Emulate 3D, another rocket automation product, to simulate the batch tanks that you can see in this demo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this premixer, select the valve here, and ensure that this valve here is set up to have a full stall alarm which it is, so this valve will not open in response to being commanded by our plant PX system. Let's go back then into our HMI for plant PX, the operator workstation, and then let's run a sequence which uses that valve to see how organization, ownership and arbitration helps us identify um, the fault for the user. So what I'm going to do here is open up a charge equipment phase. Okay, this is using the equipment phase framework, which will be another video that we're talking about, about equipment phases and the framework we provide in the library. But we've used that framework to implement a sequence in our controller that performs charging of this premixer. It can charge um, by opening one of these valves up the top here, um, a certain amount of weight of water, caustic or acid. So we're going to run this charge phase to see what happens when a fault occurs. Now, the first thing we need to do is put this equipment phase into operator mode so that we can control it from the HMI manually. And we notice here that it's in program mode and it's locked into program mode. And this is because something above it has acquired it. If we go into the tree view, which we can also access from the equipment phase um, and then go and locate um, this particular phase, EP601 charge, which is shown at the top, we can see here, when we highlight the mouse over it, that it's owned by the device above it, unit P601. Yeah, this is the unit faceplate which I've opened up here. So by from the faceplate, I can release everything underneath unit P601, and then this charge has now changed to being in program mode. So from here, I can now switch this device to operator and I can control it from the HMI. So now we have our charge equipment phase in operator mode. Let's set up our charge to charge an amount of water into the, this premixer. So I'm going to select to add 250 kilograms of water into the premixer. I'm going to set that as the value is being used by the phase. And then we're going to start our phase. You can then see steps as the phase is running here. So we're starting the totalizer, and we're now the phase sequence has gone on to try and to open this DI water valve. So the valve has been commanded, but set to failure, the valve has failed to move, and we can hear the alarms there from that valve. Now it may not be immediately obvious to the user the fault that has caused um, the sequence to fail. Yeah, the sequence has failed, it's gone into hold, and it's showing that it has a device alarm. But this is again where the nice feature of organization, ownership and arbitration makes it very easy for the user to identify um, the devices um, that are causing an issue for this equipment phase. And this is done by opening up the tree view for this equipment phase. Here we can then see for our charge phase, which has an issue, which devices that are being used by the charge phase contain the issue. And this one here we can see has um, two issues present. Again, we can use the help if we're not sure what these indicators mean, that there is a device not ready to operate and there is an alarm on that device, active, which is um, an alarm that's gone healthy, um, but needs acknowledgement. We can then click on the device directly to see the details of that. So here we can see that the alarm that caused the issue was a full stall alarm because we set up our process simulation um, to not allow that valve to move. From the diagnostics, we can see that there's a device failure and we need a reset to clear this condition. So from the faceplate, I will 
clear the alarms on that device. Our equipment phase still has an alarm just active to say one of its devices had an alarm. So we'll also need to clear that alarm from the equipment phase. I can then close this faceplate. Um, and if we wish, we can restart that phase. But if we don't do anything to fix the valve, it will fail again. Let's now demonstrate using shared ownership with organization ownership and arbitration and how it helps us identify um, issues where something is owned by something else. So on our pre-mixer um, unit, <clears throat> we have a bunch of equipment phases which control control modules and we also have an equipment phase which can control these equipment phases so here we can see a display that shows our equipment phase that can control other equipment phases it's this one down on the bottom left here and it controls these other equipment phases um, which you've already seen some of this is a, a way of achieving simple recipe level control coded in our plant px controller so to show an example of shared ownership i'm going to open up this equipment phase and i'm going to ask it to try and acquire its children the equipment phases that it uses to execute its recipe So now, after clicking this button, we've told it to try and acquire its children. Um, and you see that it's tried to do that and it's failed. It's found that it's not able to do that. It has a child that's not usable. This is another nice feature of organization ownership and arbitration, where we can actually very easily see what's causing the problem. What child can it not acquire? We do that by opening up the tree view and the tree view then displays what's going on for this equipment phase. So we can see that this equipment phase uses the agitate, charge, temperature, control, prompt, timer and transfer out phases. But for all of them, it has an issue. We can go into our help to see what that issue is. It's that the object is not usable by the parent. So this is basically telling us that this phase cannot acquire this phase. And if we highlight the mouse over each of these phases, we can see why it cannot acquire it. It's because it's owned by something else, the P601 unit. So if we wish to proceed, we have to wait for that P601 unit to finish, or we have to go and tell that P601 unit to release it, which we can do from here. So if we go back into our premix of 601, we open up the unit faceplate. We can tell the unit to release its children. But before we do that, I'm going to bring up the tree view so that we can see what happens. So here we can see that we have the 601, bring the 601 unit, owning all these phases. And we have this equipment phase trying to own them, but at the moment, unable to own them. Let's go into our unit and release its children. As soon as its children become available, because this other equipment phase is trying to acquire them, it will acquire them. And now they are owned by it. So that's the end of our demonstration of some of the nice key features of organization, ownership and arbitration. Please also have a look at our other videos on equipment modules and equipment phrases, some of which you've seen being used today. Thank you.